falsely accusing Senator Obama of ditching wounded U.S. troops in Germany because of press restrictions. The latest McCain campaign ad made an even more outlandish claim, quote, John McCain is always there for our troops. Our fourth story on the countdown, except when he isn't. As Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid noted in mid-2007, McCain only showed up for four of the past 14 Senate votes on Iraq. So far this year, he's shown up for none, not even the resolution honoring the sacrifice made by the fallen. And looking at just part of McCain's record of supporting the troops since the war in Iraq began, April 2003, he tabled a motion to provide over a billion dollars of National Guard and Reserve equipment. October 2003, he tabled an amendment to provide an additional $322 million for safety equipment for U.S. troops in Iraq. March 2004, he voted against eliminating abusive tax loopholes that would have increased veterans' medical care by $1.8 billion. March 2006, he voted against closing corporate tax loopholes that would have increased veteran medical services by $1.5 billion. April 2006, he voted against providing an extra $430 million for veteran outpatient care. May 2006, he voted against $20 million for veteran health care facilities. March 2007, he didn't bother to vote on a resolution to start redeploying troops from Iraq by March 2008. September 2007, he voted against Senator Webb's amendment that would specify minimum rest periods for troops in between deployments. And in May 2008, he first spoke out against Senator Webb's GI Bill, then didn't bother to show up to vote on it. But none of that stopped him from accepting President Bush's praise when the bill ultimately passed. Joining me now, our own Rachel Maddow, the host of the Rachel Maddow Show on Air America Radio. Thanks for your time tonight, Rach. Hi, Keith. All right, John McCain is always there for our troops. If you go after your opponent for not supporting the troops when your own record is pretty clearly indicative that you do not support the troops, do you not provoke people to look at your own record like we just did? I've long said, and you've been saying this too, that there is a fascinating candidacy for the presidency happening right now if people could just pay attention to it for a hot minute. Uh, John McCain can't hold the press's interest for long enough to get this kind of scrutiny in very many, med in very many media venues. And his campaign is counting on, and I think they've been right to count on so far, the idea that if you kind of squint and don't focus too much, the fact that he is a veteran can sort of substitute for the idea that he has done right by veterans as a politician, that he's done right by veterans and by the troops as a senator. But the fact is, Iraq and Afghanistan veterans of America, they gave John McCain a D for his voting record. They gave Barack Obama a B plus. Disabled American veterans gave John McCain just a 20% voting record. They gave Barack Obama an 80% voting record. There's a difference between being a veteran and supporting veterans as a politician. He's just counting on people not being able to tell the difference. Uh, on CNN last Friday, uh, McCain pretty much swiped the Obama 16-month timetable for withdrawal, said it sounded like a pretty good time timetable asked about it on ABC yesterday he said I didn't use the word timetable uh, what was that a magical belief that if he closes his eyes he becomes invisible <laughs> he becomes invisible <laughs> that that tape doesn't work that broadcasting is different than what it actually is I mean he, this is this is a repeated um, a repeated tactic by Senator McCain you'll recall back during the Republican primary campaign at one of the debates he told Tim Russert that he had never said that he wasn't an expert on the economy when confronted with that he thought oh okay all right I guess I did say it he repeatedly insists that he has not said things that he has said or that he has said things that he hasn't and it implies either a lack of understanding literally about how the media works or just a belief that the media will always sort of bend over backwards and round things up to the nearest thing that makes sense and sounds good for him yep. he's, he's gotten such a he's got such a uh, he's received such a i, I think a, a, an ease a, a pass really from the from the media thus far that he's counting on it carrying him right through to the presidency yeah but even it, it seems as if there was a description from a gop uh, a source in one of the papers today who said that, that, that he was very angry that he wasn't getting that pass last week, that he still wasn't the center of attention here. And, and this Center for Media and Public Affairs at George Mason University just put out a study of the evening newscast. This is the same study that they came out in 2006 and said some of the network newscasts seem to be giving the Democrats an easier time before the midterms. The right-wing media jumped all over this and said this is the greatest survey ever conducted. So we, in that context, look at these numbers. ABC, CBS, and NBC, 28% of opinions expressed on the nightly newscast about Obama were positive and 72% were negative and for McCain it's 43% positive and 57% negative so can you explain the thought cloud that seems to be sitting like a pall over the country that Obama is not only getting too much coverage but the media is soft on him when research suggests that if anything it's, is true it's the opposite the media is 
uh, less, not only softer on McCain, but seldom if ever touches him for an expose or even a fact check. They are giving him a free pass. Who would you, looking at those numbers, looking at the sort of benefit of the doubt that's given to the two candidates, who would you rather be in this media environment? Would you rather be the guy who gets to get away with gaff after gaff after gaff after gaff and never gets called on anything? Or would you like to be the guy who admittedly maybe the press is obsessed with, but everything you do is scrutinized to a degree that you, you are, you've been made out to be making many more gaps than you are making, and everything that you say is being taken apart left, right, and center. John McCain is having the media cover for him when he can hold their interest. This is, this is what John McCain has done for his entire career. The question is whether or not the fact that he might be the next president is finally going to change that orientation of the press toward him. Yeah, and that, that ad today was particularly sleazy, and the media's reaction to it was particularly um, unconscionable. Uh, Rachel Maddow of Air America and MSNBC, who I exclude from that analysis, as I exclude myself. <laughs> Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Keith.